By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And it is Tuesday, so that means more action from the Dark Tournament. So this is the Dark Only Constructed. If you'd like to know more about the ins and outs of this tournament, check the description below. It has all the information you need. And this is match number five that I'm playing in this tournament. It is my last chance to get through the group stages. I need to win this one. I need at least two games win. I'm playing against a deck that's called Kill Em All. So that's sounding pretty scary. And it's made by Rob, a player from the Netherlands. And it is green and black. Now, before I start with the deck tech of both of the decks, I'm also going to Take a quick glance at my deck, which of course is still my same blue red ghost family deck. Uh, before I do that, I would like to point out that you can also go to the description below and there you will find a timestamp that reads MTG games. I know that some people enjoy just going to the game straight away. Maybe check out the deck tech after the matches. Um, so you can do that by clicking on the timestamp that will take you straight to the action. And here we are going to continue with the deck tech. I'm going to start by looking at the deck of my opponent and it is... It is strong. It is interesting. It's called Kill Em All. Let's take a look at the deck of Rob. Okay, and here we see the deck of my opponent, Kill Em All. It is green. It is black. And it is such an interesting combination to play in the dark. And I was actually also thinking about playing this because of one card, Dark Heart of the Wood. And Dark Heart of the Wood, you can see it here on the screen. It is an enchantment from the dark. One green and one black and you can sacrifice the forest to gain three life. Now this may not seem like much, but it's actually very, very powerful. Late game, you know, these games, they, well, some of these games, they can go pretty long and then Dark Heart of the Wood can give you the game, really. When you're kind of in a standstill, when you're slowly grinding through, which can happen because you're playing with green and black. So green especially means a lot of creatures on the board really gummed up board states and then this Dark Heart of the Wood can kind of give you the time you need, give you the life you need to, you know, play your Ashes to Ashes, for example, but also to withstand direct damage. You know, direct damage, the red decks have been doing okay-ish in this tournament, but when you hit this Dark Heart of the Wood wall, you're just not going to beat it with your direct damage in a lot of cases. This, I think this card is really underestimated in regular old school as well. And I think in this format, it could be really, really strong. Now you're probably wondering, okay, if you're such a big fan of Dark Heart of the Wood, why didn't you just play with black and green yourself? Well, there are a few reasons. First off, I, I just had to play with Ghost Ship. I mean, those cool altars, I had to play with them. Um, and I just thought the idea of Dance of Many Ball Lightning was just too cool not to play. Um, but now that I'm seeing this deck from Rob, I'm like, oh man, this is also such a sweet deck. Such a sweet deck. There are just a lot of really nice cards in here. I think what green does really well is just give you a lot of big creatures and give you a lot of value for your mana, especially in old school. If you look at a card like Spitting Slot, two green, one to cast for a 2-4. I mean, that is huge in this format. That is going to be a problem for your opponent. And you also have Trackers. Trackers, they're 2-2, two, two, one green, two to cast. Uh, two green tap, tap and they fight, you know, they deal damage equal to their power to another creature and they get the damage back equal to the power of that creature that they're targeting. And this is just a huge, a huge thing. You know, there are a lot of 1-1 one, one little creatures that you want to kill with your tracker or just trade a 2-2 two, two for 2-2 two, two. that's like more important for your opponent. Um, so tracker is really good as well. And maybe the best card creature-wise at least um, is Wormwood Tree Folk, two green and uh, three to cast for a 4-4, four, four, which are really just, you know, great stats to have. And a Wormwood Tree Folk, on top of that, uh, you can give it a Swamp Walk and you can give it Forest Walk. So it's really this, yeah, it's really a strong card. I mean, that those two abilities are not going to be um, really handy against my deck because I don't play with green, I don't play with black. But against a lot of decks, that basically means that your Wormwood Tree Folk is unblockable and you've got a 4-4 four, four unblockable creature. That is something. That is really powerful. Um, also, something I like here is 
it is hard to kind of effectively ramp. You don't have Lanor Elves, but you do have um, the Elves of Deep Shadow, which I think is beautiful art. I think it's a beautiful card, and it's a 1-1 one, one for 1 green, and you can tap it for 1 black. It does deal 1 damage, though. So you've got a lot of cards in here that inflect dam damage. You also have the Banshee. Banshee, what a cool card. Anyway, that also deals damage to you. So the Dark Heart of the Wood, again, getting back to that card, is really important here because... You've got Ashes to Ashes, you've got Banshee, uh, you've got Elves of Deep, Sh Deep Shadow. When you use your Wormwood Tree Folk, uh, Swamp Walk or Force Walk ability, you get damage. You just get a lot of damage, right? Which is part of the dark, by the way. You've got to pay the dark taxes for your magic. It's in every color. Like It's, it's very life and mana demanding, this whole set. So uh, when you're playing the dark only, it doesn't matter because your opponent will probably have similar Dif difficulties that's i think that's one of the reasons that you see so many players playing with the fountain of youth because you need some life at a certain point anyway back to dark art of the wood dark art of the wood can really get you the life you need to do all that crazy stuff dark art of the wood and banshee i mean that is legit in this format that is gonna get you to places so i i hope uh, one side of me hopes that rob doesn't get dark art of the wood and banshee on, on against me but there's, of course, the Timmy in me that wants to see this really happening. Is it really as good as I think it is? So I'm looking forward to see that. And just one little thing about Dark Heart of the Wood. I think it's the first, and I think Rob, actually you told me this. I think it's the first gold card printed with enemy colors. So enemy colors, what I mean by that is that, you know, black and green, they're like natural enemies of each other. If you look at the back of a magic card, you see that white dot at the top right you see the five color dots when the dots are next to each other it means they're friends of each other so white and green that's an allied color white and blue it's an allied color uh, for black black is an allied color with red and an allied color with uh, blue but it's not an allied color with black now back in the day the only gold card you had pri prior to the dark was in legends and there it's only uh, alliance color so only friendly colors and not enemy color so i do think this is the first card dark heart of the wood where we're seeing it with um with enemy colors and another cool thing about this card this is made by uh the late christopher rush the fantastic artist and it was actually reprinted only once in ravnica's city of guilds um, and there the art is made by mark tedden which is also an artist from the same era so I wonder how, how that kind of went, if it maybe was a tribute to Christopher Rush in a way. It's it's a very, just a very unique, unique card. Um, another interesting, interesting thing here um, when we look at this card and when we go back is, yes, it's green and black, but the black component, I guess it's that you're sacrificing the forest to gain life. That's maybe the black component to it. Life is the green, sacrificing is the black. So, okay, it's kind of balanced. I wanted to say there's not really... Um, you cannot sacrifice a swamp for something, but I guess that would have made the card too good. Would have been cool though. So let's say we're thinking about a new ability, sacrifice a swamp as well with this card. What ability would that be? Maybe re regenerate a creature or something? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, really a big, big fan of this card. Okay, uh, <laughs> this is the deck of Rob. Well, I, we haven't really talked about what Rob wants to do with his deck, right? When, when I'm looking at his deck, I think he wants to trample over me. He just wants to ramp up, play all his creatures, get an Ashes to Ashes, get rid of my teeny puny creatures, and ramp over me. I think this deck is... Um, it's looking it's looking pretty powerful. It's looking pretty powerful. I mean, I, I have chances, of course. Um, I think... One of the things I think maybe the deck is, is building up too much mana. But then again, he can use the mana in Banshee, I guess. Banshee is kind of the, the mana sink here. Uh, I think Eater of the Dead, also very strong card. 3-4, which is good. And only one black and one black and four to cast. So not double black, as in most of these cards in the dark have a double color casting cost. Um, Eater of the Dead, strangely enough, doesn't have. And you can kind of untap it which is way more powerful than you might think. You know, it's really a strong ability and it's something that only Eater of the Dead can do in the dark. So it is, it is a big deal. It's a big deal. Anyway, this is the deck of Rob. Let's take a look uh, at my deck again, just a quick glance and then we'll go over to the matches. Let's take a look at Ghost Family.
And here we see my deck. It is the blue red ghost family deck that you probably know by now. And um, this deck has a very strong flyer component with the fire drakes and the ghost ships. Another strategy that I'm trying to pull off here is bull lightning with dance of money, just dealing 12 damage in one go. Now, if you want to see the extensive deck deck of this deck, if you haven't seen it yet, there is a link popping up right now. And that will take you to episode number one in episode number one. I really go through this deck and I say, okay, this is my idea with this. This is my idea with that. Um, to give you a little example, um, I'm playing with Save Haven, right? Now, obviously, I want to play Ball Lightning, deal six damage, then put it in my Save Haven, and then do the same thing the next turn. That's like a little example of some of the synergies that you can find in this deck. So if you're interested in that, um, go to episode one. Just in general, if you haven't seen any of the other episodes so far in this tournament and you like this to dark only format, there's a whole playlist and you can look at all of them back. And it's just, it's, it's just been a blast so far. I've really enjoyed playing all these matches. And um, yeah, this is my last match in the group stage. So the situation is right now, I've won three matches. I've lost one match and I need... I need at least, the thing is with, with the tournament is you get a point for every game you win, but it also means your opponent gets a point for every game they win. So if you win a match with 2-1, it means you get two points, your opponent gets one point. So even though you've won a lot of matches, it doesn't mean that you're going to go through to the next round because we're going to look at the total amount of points, like one game per point. So winning 2-1 only gives you two points, where winning 3-0 gives you three points. So I'm not in the clear yet. I need, I think I need a victory against Rob here, or at least I need to win one game at least to kind of keep, keep a chance of victory. And um, yeah, we just saw Rob's deck. It is some serious business. So I have to, have to focus here. Without further ado, let's go to game one. And here we go. I'm sitting on the left with the Timmy playmat. My opponent, Rob, is sitting on the right. And unfortunately, I have some bad news because this is actually game number two, not number one. Something went wrong with recording. This is the second game. I have more bad news. Well, more bad news for me. I lost at game number one. So it's 1-0 um, for Rob or 0-1, whatever you want to look at it. And um, yeah, I really have to try to win some matches to advance in the next round, starting here with a Fountain of Youth and my opponent with an Elves of Deep Shadow, using that Elves now for a nice three drop to Tracker. So that is a 2-2, making a life there with Fountain of Youth going up to 21. So this is the second game. I'm one game down. Ooh, finding a second island would have been nice to find actually a mountain instead of an island. That would have enabled me to play uh, a Brothers of Fire, but okay, that's not the case. Playing a Tangle Kelp instead on the Tracker. Now he's attacking me with the Tracker. Now, the way Tangle Kelp uh, works is that if you've attacked with the creature, it doesn't untap next turn. That's why I'm putting the counter on. And this is pretty cool. We see a Rackman. Now, Rackman is a 2-1 creature from the dark. And I believe you got to pay 3 black and tap it. And then you got to look at opponent's hand. And um, you, can, you can take a creature card out of it. And um, let, let's see. If opponent has any creature cards in hand, he or she discards one of them at random. So it's just a very, very funky card. And I think he's actually gonna, gonna use it now. Or at least he's gonna ask me how many cards I have. He, you, got, you gotta use it, Rob. Come on, you gotta use it. So, oh, he's actually attacking me with it. Oh, that's unfortunate. Playing a Wormwood Tree Folk. That is the better play though. I do understand it. But it, it, hopefully we can see Rackman in action in this game. Going down to 19. Things are looking very bad for me, by the way. Remember, the tracker is going to untap as well, playing a Dance of Many. I wonder what I'm going to copy Wormwood Tree Folk, I guess. That's going to give me a 4-4 to block with. So at least that's something. So I've got a 4-4 blocker. And we see another forest here. But, I mean, look how much creature power Rob already has. Now he's using his Rackman, so I get to show my hand. And then I've got to discard the Bull Lightning or the Fire Drake. <laughs> Oh, this is so bad. I cannot cast the Bull Lightning, so hopefully the Bull Lightning, he's gonna... Okay, so at least that's some good news, I guess. Oh, but this is bad. I had Bull Lightning, Dance of Many, and Save Haven in hand, so... Wow, that would have been really cool. 
But, I mean, Rob is just not giving me the time to do that. Now he's attacking with his Wormwood. He's saying, you know what, I want to trade, and then you, you're open to more attacks the next turn. So I'm kind of taking the trade, making a life with Fountain of Youth. At least my Fountain of Youth is kind of helping me. And, of course, I'm drawing my third red. That's typical, right? Anyway, going down, um, playing the Fire Drake, I want to say passing turn here. And, oh, man, look at that. Eater of the Dead, a 3-4 creature that he can untap. This is just too much firepower from Rob right now. And here you can see the, the green deck really annihilating uh, me here. There's so little I can do. Going down to 16 with the Land Leeches and also the attack with the Ragman. Casting a Ghost Ship here. 2-4 Ghost Ship. And, of course, next turn Rob can start attacking with his Eater of the Dead, at least my Ghost Ship will give me some protection and hopefully I can use my Fountain of Youth to kind of stabilize. Um, I mean, I have 17 life. It's, it's not over, but yeah, I need an Inferno actually. There's a Binding Grasp tapping both of my creatures. So Binding Grasp, a Sorcery from the Dark, two black to cast an X to pay, tap X target creatures. And this is ideal for Rob's deck. Look at him go. Attacking with everything except for the tracker. Keeping the tracker at bay. Now I'm at 10 life, so he's half my life here. Remember, Inferno deals 6 damage to everything, including myself, right? So I need to stay above 6. I'm really hoping to draw into Inferno. I don't even have enough mana to cast Inferno, by the way. But I need a land, I need an Inferno, and I need it right now. I need to... Come on. Already lost game number one. This is game two. I, I got to get some points here. Tapping a blue, probably playing a Tangle Kelp. Playing a Tangle Kelp here. And remember, it, it doesn't make much sense to cast it on the Eater of the Dead because with Eater of the Dead, he can remove a creature to, re, to untap his Eater of the Dead. And he actually has a creature in play. And yeah, this is interesting. There is a counter on Spitting Slug because it attacked last turn. That's actually how Tangle Kelp works. It's kind of a going back in time card. It's, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, and you see me putting the counter on then putting the counter off again, reminding ourselves that Tangle Kelp is going to untap next turn. And here he is. He's attacking me with Eater of the Dead. No, he's not doing it. He's changed his mind. I wonder what he has in hand that he's thinking about attacking here. Paying six. Oh, there is a Banshee and a Felwer Stone. That Banshee is going to be a problem for me. With Banshee, he can deal X damage to any target. So that is a big problem. He's got tons and tons of mana to put into his Banshee. Things are looking really bad. And I've just been under pressure since day one playing a Fisher here on the Banshee, which I think is a good decision. Problem here is I no longer have mana left now to pump up my Fire Drake. That means that next turn Rob can use his tracker to kill my Fire Drake. Now I'm hoping that maybe he's not seeing it. Fingers crossed. Maybe. Attacking with everything. I think he's seeing it. And he also knows that when I block with my ghost ship here, he can use his tracker to kill my ghost ship. So this is really well thought of by Rob and a big problem for me blocking with the fire drake because I'm realizing it's gonna die anyway blocking the wreck man and taking even more damage going down to six and uh oh man this is bad news what can I do here playing another he's playing another tracker by the way kind of missed that there um playing a fire drake it's pretty much over here there's, there's not much I can do. I mean, Inferno was my way out, but now I'm too low on life. At least the Land Leeches doesn't untap, but does that really matter much? He can attack with the Eater of the Dead. Oh, Maze of If, even better. He can just attack with everything, take the Maze. With the Maze, take a creature out. That's not a good block for him. And, you know, maybe keep one tracker untapped to kill my Ghost Ship. This is so bad. And I feel like in this game too, I've had zero chance of, of winning this. And we see Rob thinking here, really kind of in the tank, wanting to make the right decision, not, not making a hasty decision. But when I'm looking at this board state, I don't think he has too much to worry about. Attacking with Eater of the Dead is kind of a no-brainer. Actually, he's, he's not doing it. I'm a little bit surprised here. 
I expected an attack with the Eater of the Dead. Maybe I'm missing something. That's absolutely possible. Drawing a card here, two in hand. Passing turn here. So the Tangle, or sorry, the Land Leech is untaps 2 2 first striker. And this is actually not too bad. He can destroy my Fountain of Youth. I mean, it's not that relevant, but it's something. And now look at this attacking with a tracker with a Land Leeches and an Eater of the Dead. I'm taking a life. Okay, that's something. Going to seven. Of course, I can block and then put it in the safe haven. I can do that. Looks like I'm Fire Drake on the tracker, pumping him for one. Eater of the Dead on. My ghost ship, if he's gonna fight with the ghost ship, I can actually, oh, look at this, taking the tracker out of combat with the maze. Oh, I've blocked the, um, the land leeches here. Interesting, I would have expected maybe Rob to have used his tracker to kill my ghost ship. He didn't do it. Unfortunately for me, I'm really not drawing anything useful. You, you just see me passing turn, passing turn, passing turn. So I'm really trying to stay alive, find, trying to find something useful. I have no idea what's in my hand, but it's not useful. Maybe an amnesia, you know, that could be the case. I'm still stuck on five lands, by the way. I've been stuck on five lands for a while, which is not a big problem for my deck, but I cannot cast Inferno. But I guess Inferno would be suicide right now because I'm on four. But earlier in the game, Inferno would have been a game changer. Attacking with Eater of the Dead, Tracker, and Elves of Deep Shadow. Remember, he's got that Maze of If to take any, un, any attacker out of combat without any consequence. And that maze is just so strong with this situation because it allows Rob to just attack with everything. And if it doesn't work out, well, maze it, no worries. Fire Drake, blocking Elves of Deep Shadow, paying five here for a Fisher. And probably gonna Fisher Eater of the Dead. Yeah, gonna Fisher the Eater of the Dead, gonna take two from the Tracker in that case. I could have just traded Fire Drake for Tracker, I guess. But I don't want to do that. I just want to keep my creatures alive. Is he now going to use... Or am I blocking both? It's always kind of difficult to look back at these situations. What am I blocking? What am I not blocking? I think I was indicating that I'm blocking Fire Drake on the Elzo Deep Shadow. Maybe the Ghost Ship on the Tracker. In that case, Rob can choose to use his other Tracker to attack. Instead, he's using the Maze of If to take him out of combat. And it means I'm going to lose the Fire Drake here. Okay, interesting. Not quite sure what happened here, to be honest. Oh, of course, I couldn't pump the Fire Drake. That's it. So I guess I blocked the Fire Drake on the tracker. No, I blocked the... Okay, now I know what happened. <laughs> it's so complicated. I did the Fire Drake on the Elves of Deep Shadow, right? In response, Rob used his tracker to kill my Fire Drake. That's what, what happened. Okay, then it makes sense. Oh, man. Trekker is such a cool card, but it does create complicated board states. Anyway, I'm kind of dead now. I mean, what can I do, really? Found mana number six. Looks like I'm going to cast something. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm not dead dead. I'm still on four, but I lost the Fountain of Youth. Uh, I keep drawing. I guess I want to do two things in a turn. I can only do one thing in a turn. Uh, playing Barrel's Cage. Ah, man. Just missing one. Barrel's Cage takes three to activate and then target creature doesn't untap. Unfortunately for me, I don't have that third mana. I just missed too many land drops earlier in the game. Now he's attacking with everything. And remember, um, I'm going to block probably the other tracker. He's going to take it out of combat with his maze. That means I'm going to take three damage. I'm on one. He's playing a Spitting Slug. I can, I can at least use my Barrel's Cage to keep the Elves of Deep Shadow tapped. That's something, but then I'm still facing two attackers and I only have got one blocker. So if I can use the Barrel's Cage, maybe have, I don't know, a Brothers of Fire, Sisters of the Flame or something to, to block the other creature, I can actually stay alive one more turn longer. Using the Barrel's Cage on the Elves of Deep Shadow, that's why you see that second counter on my side of the board, and it looks like <laughs> I'm just slamming down my cards. That's never a good sign when somebody, well, it's a good sign for Rob, but not for me. Oh, look at that. Bull Lightning was useless in this situation. 
Uh, congratulations, Rob, winning the second game. That means it's it's 0-2 right now for Rob. And I, I have to say, man, your deck, it's impressive. I just, I didn't have a chance here. Uh, hopefully game number three will be uh, better for me. So let's quickly go to that one and see if I stand a chance. Let's go to game three. Game number three. Okay, so I'm, I'm two games down. I'm probably out of the tournament, but if I can win a single game, at least I can get a point. Maybe, just maybe, I can get through, who knows. But, uh, oh man, at least I'm hoping for a better game than game number two, because that was a slaughterhouse. That was like full pressure for me from the get-go. So, uh, I, I should say full pressure not from me, on me by Rob. Anyway, at least I'm, I'm on the play here, starting with a basic island passing turn. Oh man, look at that. Fountain of Youth and an Elves of Deep Shadow. Great start for Rob here. And just a basic land passing turn here, or no, no Felwer Stone, no nothing, just passing turn. Taking a damage, there is a three drop. It's really nice to see, like in this uh, green black deck, I'm just seeing efficient ramping for the first time, if I compare that with, with all the other um like the dark decks i've seen so far playing a tangle kelp on the spinning slug remember it's a two four but there are just a lot of three drops that rob isn't able to play if he can find that elves of deep shadow luckily for me he cannot find a swamp or at least i think lucky because he's not playing anything out so maybe this can buy me some time to get into this playing another um tangle kelp and remember that doesn't untap next turn and I'm playing a Dance of Many, doing quite a lot here. Um, oh, taking the Dance of Many back, deciding not to do it. Okay. Uh, but remember, the Elves of Deep Shadow now doesn't untap. Spitting Slug doesn't untap. So at least he's kind of stuck now. But he's finding a Swamp. Will he be able to play something out? That is the big question now. Not playing anything out. So again, he's, he's, giving me, he's kind of giving me an opening here. I feel like I have to do something with that. Is this a Brothers of... Okay, that's a Brothers of Fire. This is great news for me. I can start using Brothers of Fire to, you know, kill the Elves of Deep Shadow next turn. And we slowly see Rob gaining some life from that Fountain of Yuffie. He's now in 21. Aye, there's Wormwood Tree Folk. And he's also attacking me again. Ah, oh, man, the Wormwood Tree Folk is just so big. I, I just need a Fisher to get rid of it. It's a huge problem. I also don't have really any any blockers. This is a Fisher? Yeah, Fisher. Okay, playing Fisher. And it would have been so nice if I could have played Fisher on his Swamp now, but I first have to deal with that 4-4. It's just too big to ignore. But in an ideal world, I could have taken out his, his second Swamp there. Remember, he also plays with Ashes to Ashes, which we didn't see in game two, but it's a huge problem. Tapping again, another Wormwood. No, okay, we see Rackman. And we see Elves of Deep Shadow. Now the good news is I can kill both creatures with my Brothers of Fire, but it's going to take some time. Probably first going to use it on Rackman. I think so, at least. So we're kind of discussing it right now. Of course he did. Yeah, I, I think I should play it on Rackman, even though it would take two damage for Rob to activate it. So we're kind of, I'm not sure what we're discussing. Maybe just that it's a fun card. I don't know. It's a cool card, Brothers of Fire. Rackman's cool too, by the way. So dealing a damage to the Rackman, that's out of the game. But also dealing a damage to myself, you know, don't forget that. And again, he can start attacking. Now attacking with the Spitting Slug, that means I'm going to go to 12. And I feel kind of lucky here that Rob's not really finding another bomb. If he would find another Wormwood Tree Folk, I mean, that would be a huge problem for me. Maybe he's waiting for me to cast a second creature. You know? Oh man, a bull lightning would be really sweet right now. And yeah, there's a bull lightning. This is fantastic. And oh, copying it. Boom! 12 damage. I think this is the third or the fourth time that I've done this now, which is really nice. So it's, it's good that I'm able to do this. Also thinking about the ashes, the ashes in Rob's deck. I just don't want to give him two creatures so he's now on six and i've got my brothers of fire to kind of you know deal some damage right so maybe i got this ah, it's still too early but oh banshee 
Yeah, I gotta kill the Banshee first. He's just an O1, so I'm gonna use Brothers of Fire. And here you can really see how good Brothers of Fire is, right? It's really helping me. If that Banshee could have been able to, to stick around, it would have been a huge liability. Tapping three, no, deciding not to. Or am I? No. Just passing turn it would be so sweet to find another mount and then I can activate Brothers of Fire twice. The problem here is that Rob also, of course, has that Fountain of Youth. I've kind of forgot about the Fountain of Youth and that is kind of like a prevent one damage from the Brothers of Fire if I'm going to try to kill him with that. I mean, again, um, an Inferno would be excellent. I think Inferno is a great weapon in general against these type of decks, but I only play with a one-off and haven't seen it the entire match. So, which is not strange if you play with one. But it would be nice to kind of get lucky. He's on six, you know. Inferno deals six to everything. His creatures would be dead. He wouldn't be dead because he can activate the Fountain of Youth, but he would be almost dead. Would be good. There we see a Felwer Stone. I'm really kind of lucky here looking at the pools of, of Rob, you know. He's not really finding another big, big creature like Eater of the Dead or a Wormwood Tree Folk. Tapping four, will we see a Ghost Ship? Ghost ship can stop the spinning slug. That's more good news for me. So passing turn, then maybe end step. I can kill one of his elves or do I want to do that right now? He's got enough mana. There's no really need to do that. Passing turn here. So he's drawing his second card. Gaining life from the Fountain of Youth, of course, in his end step. Spinning slug remains stepped because of the Tangle Kelp. Ashes to ashes. Oh man, this is so painful. At least he takes five damage and he's almost dead. He's on one life using the Brothers of Fire, not killing an Elves of Deep Shadow, going for his life total. He's on one, I'm on five life. I need some blockers, that's what I need. Remember, Spitting Slug is gonna untap next turn. Give me some blockers. Come on, give me this match. Give me, I, 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 give me this. Okay, Fire Drake and... Okay, Fire Drake, Ghost Ship. So this seems to be okay. Remember, um, I can use Ghost Ship to block the Spitting Slug. And then block one of the Elves. I'm going to go do three. And oh, no! Oh, man. Ah, this is just not my day. It's not my day. So this card is Word of Binding. Uh, two Black and X Sorcery. X target creatures becomes tapped, right? So he taps his my two blockers and he kills me. Look at that. I had a fissure in hand as well. Oh, man. Why didn't I just use the... F ah, ah. Well, Rob, compliments to you, man. That was a beautiful victory. We got to look at it from both sides, right? Uh, Rob, well done, man. Really cool to see you pull this one off. I really thought I had at least his third game in the back. That means that you've defeated me 0-3. And I think I think this green-black combination is, is very powerful. Uh, I probably could have played better, but man. I actually, I don't think so. I think it's Rob, you, you played very well and, and, and well, well done, well done. So it's 0-3. Uh, it's Good game, congratulations, and uh, thank you for uh, for um, sharing this with all of the, with all of us. And if you want to see more of the dark, I will be showing uh, the quarterfinals, the semifinals, the finals, all of that. Unfortunately, I won't be in it. But hey, maybe that's even better. You get to see some new decks. I'm sure you've seen enough of my brew, and I can already tell you, kind of looking into the future, we're going to see a lot of green and black decks in that top eight they just proved to be very very powerful um so join me again next week tuesday where i will have another update another video about our the dark only tournament uh, for now i would like to thank you very much for watching and if you want to support the channel you can do that very simply by leaving a like leaving a comment subscribing click the notification bell and sharing this content on your socials if you want to of course and tell tell everybody tell all your friends Join the Timmy Train, join Timmy Talks right here on YouTube. Talking about joining, you can also join the Timmy Talks Patreon page. You can become a patron of the show and that allows you to join 
tournaments, to uh, join our Discord, and all sorts of funny stuff. And also, more importantly, you're helping me out to keep this channel afloat and help me grow the channel. So if you enjoy the content and you've got a penny to spare, check out the Patreon page. Talking about Patreon, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at all the fantastic, amazing channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het als fikkertes somber kan zien.